Hi, I'm Jim. And I'm Beth. Welcome to the eCycle Wisconsin Best Practices training video. Today we're going to show you around our collection site and give you some tips on how to handle e-waste. As you probably know, collection sites play a very important role in making sure electronics are recycled correctly. That's right, Beth. And electronics recycling, or e-cycling, allows for reuse of the valuable materials inside our electronics and helps prevent the toxic materials from going into our landfills. And in fact, in Wisconsin, it's the law. In order for recyclers to make the best use of old electronics, it's vital that collectors handle them safely. We found that one of the best ways to keep our site clean, safe, and manageable is to keep an easy-to-read poster of what material we accept at our facility posted at our entrance to our site on our town website and in other well-traveled parts of town. We've also made it clear that there are certain items we don't accept and keep a list of other places that will take the items we can't to help our customers discard their items properly. We've also indicated the items that are banned from landfills in Wisconsin to point out that these items need to be recycled. And lastly, we've included our fees right on the poster so folks know beforehand there will be a small charge. Once we explain how it costs us to handle these items safely and responsibly, especially the big TVs, most folks don't mind paying a small fee to e-cycle their electronics. As soon as we receive their items, we take them inside our building to protect them from rain, snow, or anything that could damage the casing, break glass, or otherwise lead to the stuff on the inside coming in contact with the stuff on the outside. Plus, it's easier to lock up at the end of the day. But Jim, not everybody has indoor storage. What can they do to protect those items? Well, lots of things. Here are some examples of other places I've seen. If you don't have any storage options, arrange more frequent pickups by your recycler. Sending your electronics to a recycler at least once a year will keep your site cleaner and make your customers happy too. In the meantime, the exact storage methods you use depend on the types of containers or other packing materials your recycler provides and what your site looks like. No matter who your recycler is or where you work, there are a few so-called best practices we follow that will always work. Number one. Reserve an area of your site for electronics and other similar items instead of just stacking them wherever you can find space. Even if space is tight, we never stack electronics higher than five to seven feet. And we never drop electronics in containers. Not only is there hazardous material in them, they are most valuable when they arrive at the recycler intact, especially cathode ray tubes, or CRTs, in old TVs and monitors, which can actually explode if they are dropped. So place them gently into a Gaylord or other container and arrange them so they are stable when they're hauled away. Especially large CRT TVs. We prefer to put these on pallets screen side down with a layer of cardboard as a cushion if there is room. No matter what, we make sure the stack or load is low and stable and we secure the whole pallet with shrink wrap to help ensure safe transport. And the same thing for flat panel TVs, except we keep those upright with the screens facing each other and then shrink wrap them together. In fact, we also reinforce and cover most of our containers when they're full. We go through a lot of shrink wrap, but it's worth it for safety's sake. Lastly, we always label our containers and Gaylords with the main type of electronics that are in them and make sure to date them. Not only because the DNR may inspect them, but also to help remind us to send them to the recycler within a year. You know, Beth, most of our efforts are to keep things from breaking. But someday, somehow, somewhere, something's going to break. Or a customer is going to bring in something that is already broken. Yep. Here's how to safely handle that situation. First off, broken tube TVs and monitors are the items we need to be the most concerned about because the CRTs are mostly made of leaded glass. Lead is harmful to humans and the environment and needs to be cleaned up immediately. We do this by isolating glass and putting it into a bin that we can tightly seal and then label it waste cathode ray tubes. Contains leaded glass and do not mix with other materials. DNR requirements state this CRT container must be stored in a building with a roof, floor, and walls to prevent the lead from finding its way into the environment. Our electronics recycler will take the broken glass at no extra charge, but you should check with yours as well. If your recycler doesn't accept broken glass, call the DNR to see if they can help you find somebody who does. 
If someone brings a broken CRT to your site, you might want to consider an added charge, especially if your recycler charges you extra for it. If you choose not to accept broken electronics, make sure you have contact info for someone who does. You don't want customers you turn away to use a ditch as their next available option. If someone wants to drop off an unusually large amount of electronics, or if you notice a pattern of the same person repeatedly bringing in broken electronics, try to document their visits, get their contact info, or even just their license plate number. This could assist in an investigation if the material is found illegally dumped somewhere else. Just an FYI, everything we've been talking about is to help protect you. Once you accept electronics from people, you are responsible for what happens to them, even after they leave your site. It's important to know that even when electronics are old or not working, they still contain valuable materials and personal information that might draw unwanted attention to your collection site. Locks, surveillance cameras, and gates on your site will help protect you from theft and vandalism, but it's also a good idea to have an attendant on duty during open hours. You know, Jim, data security is a big thing these days. We keep electronics that contain data in locked containers inside a locked building and make sure our recycler shreds all hard drives. If your site doesn't provide data security, make sure your customers know this. If your site isn't secure, be prepared to tell customers how they can destroy the data on their hard drives or try to help them find another collection location that does provide security. We're almost ready to wrap up this portion of the video. But before we go, we'd like to tell you about a few special requirements for collectors like us who have chosen to be part of eCycle Wisconsin. That's right, Beth. We became a registered eCycle Wisconsin collector when we realized that most of the electronics we were getting were from households and schools, and we wanted to make sure the electronics were being handled correctly after they left our hands. So, we joined the manufacturer-funded eCycle Wisconsin program. If you're in a similar situation, you can choose to participate in this program too. If you do, you'll send the electronics to a recycler registered with eCycle Wisconsin, register yourself annually with the DNR, and follow a few special requirements that will help ensure your electronics are properly recycled. Here are a few of the extra things we do as a registered collector. We clearly label and separate electronics eligible for this program from electronics not eligible for the program. The eligible electronics have this covered electronics label and are all the electronics that have been banned from landfills, with the exception of cell phones. These items have come from Wisconsin households, K-12 public schools, and parental choice program schools. We label all cell phones and any electronics not banned from landfills or from universities or businesses as non-covered. Your labels don't have to look like ours. Some people label the boxes EED and non-EED or CED and non-CED. The important thing is that you keep track of what is eligible for the e-cycling program. We keep careful written records of the total weight of covered devices we collect and which recycler we sent them to. All of this information is used on the annual report that registered collectors send to the DNR. The Registered Collector Report also asks us to list all of our collection locations, including permanent drop-off sites and special collection events. The DNR then puts this information on the eCycle Wisconsin website. It's great publicity for everyone. All of this record-keeping may seem like a lot of extra work, but once you know what the program expects, you can develop a labeling and recording system that works for you. One thing we can't do as an eCycle Wisconsin collector is take apart the electronics we collect. This includes clipping cords and removing batteries or toner cartridges. The only exception to this rule is if our recycler asks us to do some disassembly for safety or packaging reasons, and we are still sending all the parts to the recycler. Anything beyond simple dismantling of electronics is considered processing and may be subject to solid or hazardous waste licensing. This includes smelting, breaking, crushing glass, or shredding circuit boards. So before you start taking these things apart, Call the DNR and your local government to make sure you're not breaking any laws. We've shown you a lot today, and we hope it's been helpful. If you want more ideas for managing your site, visit dnr.wi.gov and search eCycle. The Collector webpage has a Frequently Asked Questions fact sheet and a Collector Best Management Practices guide that has helped us work through some of the problems we've faced. Plus, you can even order some of the free publications to help dress up your site.
We know that collecting electronics is an important part of the e-cycling process and we're glad to be a part of it. We'd like to thank you too for being a part of a chain of events that protects the environment, reuses valuable materials, and keeps toxic materials out of our landfills. Thanks again and happy recycling!